Um, we're going to talk about the possibility of life having occurred at some point on Mars. And the story, like the story of many things in our daily life, begins with water. Okay. In 1666, Cassini first observed Mars and noticed that it had polar caps. And this raised the possibility that there was water on Mars. Um, many spacecraft observations since then, um, starting with Mariner 9, uh, the, the, these beautiful uh, images from the Viking orbiters showed abundant evidence for water that flowed on the surface of Mars. And we know, in fact, that these surfaces are of order 4 billion years old on Mars. And so why is this important? Okay, on Earth, everywhere that there is water, there is life. Okay, and so it really raised the possibility um, that life could have existed on Mars. So what would that life be like? Okay, well, um, this says, if there is life on Mars, they say it probably won't look anything like us, okay? Um, well, we don't know that. And, um, and actually, the advantage of looking for life that is like us is that we know what to look for, okay? Um, if you're looking for something and you don't know what it is, it's hard to know when you found it. And, um, and so we, um, I'd like to motivate for you the idea of just why um, life on Mars could be like life on Earth. Okay, on the left-hand side here, um, we see a, uh, a clock um, where the formation of midnight is both the beginning and the end of time uh, as we know it four billion, four and a half billion years ago. So the moon formed at about 4.5 billion years ago and, um, and uh, prokaryotes, the first life cells, began just after that period of what we call late heavy bombardment. And if you look at the surface of the moon, um, it's greatly bombarded. And so why did life form right after that? Well, it could be that the impacts sterilized the surface um, and wiped out all life. Or it could be that life got transferred between one planet and another um, on those rocks. Okay, and um, we know, in fact, um, this is a picture of a Martian meteorite. Um, that material gets transferred be between planets. And we know that this meteorite was never uh, reached sterilization temperatures, even when it came to the Earth's atmosphere. And in fact, we believe that a billion tons of rock were exchanged between Earth and Mars because of impact packs blasting material off of the surface of Earth, transporting it to Mars, and vice versa. So most of that material, um, uh, would have come off of Mars and towards Earth, um, but some of that material could have come off Earth and before Mars. So if life on Mars is related to life on Earth, it's not clear which planet it would have started at. Okay. And, um, and so uh, one of the different ways that you could test life on Mars, the Viking landers had life detection devices on them, and, um, and the results, you know, if you're optimistic, you would say they were ambiguous. And if you're um, pessimistic or realistic, you would say they were negative. Okay, um, but we know what life on Earth looks like, and um, and so uh, we had the idea, or we have the idea, that we could search for DNA-based life. It could be DNA, uh, protein-based life, or RNA-based life. Um, but you know what that looks like, and you know uh, what it looks like. So this is a collaboration, actually, between um, various Harvard and MIT people, mainly Gary Rutkin of uh, Harvard Medical School and myself and a large group of people, um, to develop a life detection um, device, um, essentially a DNA amplifier and sequencer, um, where we could look for informational polymers that could be related to life on Earth. And so the, um, the idea behind that is that if we look at the tree of life here, um, here we have the least uh, universal common ancestor, the DNA world, and the RNA world. Um, on Earth, this is what life um, looks like. And down here, um, these polymers are common to all life forms. Okay. Um, so on Mars, um, could there be a common tree of life? And if so, um, to look for that, you would look for deeply rooted sequences that are the most conserved on Earth. And, um, and this is uh, instrumentation that we are developing um, to look for life on Mars that we hope to fly to space one day. Thank you.
it's ridiculous, isn't it? Five minutes. You hope to fly this to space one day. You can't stop that. Please, you, you have to stop that. Uh, have you plans? I mean, is there a schedule? Uh, do you have a space booked on a, on a probe? Well, what, we're what's not, that going to be? No, we're not booked on a probe. So for, you, you, need a, um, uh, you need to design an instrument and prove that it works on Earth. So um, uh, next week, uh, members of our team are uh, going to be down at the high desert in Argentina um, in extreme environments testing the instrumentation and uh, okay. trying to sequence some extreme uh, life forms um, in that area. And, um, and then we will be in a position where we can write a proposal. And uh, the next, uh, uh, they're, they're talking about, a, say, a 2017 um, Mars, right. uh, Mars lander that we will propose for. Fantastic. Thank you. Please, over here. So what characteristics are there on Earth that allow for water, for there to be water, and what does Mars lack so that there is no water there? Uh, well, Mars actually has a great deal of water that is close to the surface. Um, and that actually, that's one of the things that lead people to believe that life could in fact exist today deep beneath the surface. So uh, if you go up to near the polar regions of Mars and you go a meter deep below the surface, there is as much as 70% water by volume there. And it's in the form of ice because Mars is cold today, but it was warmer in the past. And if you go deeper beneath the surface, um, that ice will become water. And there's a good reason to believe that, uh, that the entire Martian crust has been fractured up by impacts. And, um, and so there's a lot of places for life to have perhaps uh, hidden out. Uh, what's stopping it from being on the surface like there is on Earth? What's stopping it? Uh, 6.1 millibar surface pressure so that water would evaporate um, instantly. If you, if you poured water out of a thermos bottle on Mars, it would evaporate by the time it hit the ground. Wow. Thank you. Over here, yes, please. Is it not possible that life was on Mars and then all the evidence will be destroyed by the strong radiation? Uh, that's the true, and that, that is uh, near the surface, and that's why I think anything that you want to do uh, at the surface of Mars, you want to dig uh, beneath the surface. So. Or, I mean, but you can't, you can't rule out the fact, actually, that the energy actually is a, an energy source for the life. Um, but, uh, but that, it wouldn't be our first guess. So, um, so anything that you would send to the surface of Mars would, uh, would go beneath the surface. And we'll just alternate here for now. Please, yes. Sure. So, uh, when you get whatever system that you're taking to Mars, actual lander, what is the, like, the sampling strategy and so on? Are you going to take samples as like, geographically dispersed as possible, or do you think that anywhere you bore down, you're going to be able to find something if it's there? Okay, well, it's, it's, it would not be clear if it was going to be a lander or a rover, and NASA's deciding uh, on that now, okay? Um, however, uh, so you would want a sample from air, because that's easy, okay? And, um, and you would, um, if all Mars rovers have a, a scoop uh, associated with them so that you would be able to get below the surface. And NASA provides that. Okay, so that's a, that's a sampling scoop. And then um, one of the important things is that you actually have to sequence when you get there to see what you took with you um, because you sterilize it. But always something goes with you. And actually, one of the key things is you have a, you know, if you're going to convince anybody you found life, you have to know what you launch with and then what you have once you get there before you open up. The vacuum to uh, sample the Martian environment. Yeah. Please. Hi. Uh, how would you define life? How would I define life? Um, something, well, I would define life as something that um, feeds itself and reproduces. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, in terms of the, the chemistry, it would be, you know, having a, a certain set of, uh, of polymers that would be uh, similar to what we have on Earth. So one thing that's always struck me is that it's, uh, to put it mildly for biologists, frustrating that we only have, as it were, one sample of life, at least in the evolutionary sense, to base all our current knowledge on. I wonder if you could just say something about the significance, whatever the results are, of having a second sample should your uh, scoop detect life elsewhere. What sorts of thoughts come to mind about the implications of having that well, knowledge? Well, um we're either special or we're not. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, um, and, and, um, and, and those are actually equally interesting um, possibilities. Um, and, um, and, and I think that, that if we don't find on Mars, life on Mars, and, and of course this is a very low probability, 
but the consequences are so huge. Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you. Well, if you